Welcome to Top Shops. Today we're featuring a bus I would have loved to come home in. When Brett and Mike Broughton were looking for a service truck that would house a shop full of tools as well as provide a place to get in from the weather, they invested in an old school bus for that vehicle. In doing so, they not only got a great shop on wheels, but also a field dining hall. Let's go talk to Brett about their school bus conversion. Well, I have to admit, this is the first time, the only other time I've ever seen a bus converted into a service truck was out in Idaho, and it was a lot cruder than this one. This is pretty refined. So uh, talk about the fact that this, this is a, the first year in this bus, isn't it? Yep. And um, this is a 84 passenger bus? Yeah, it, our last one was a 62 passenger. And you upgraded because you want a little more room. Yeah, we just had some things that we had learned over the years we wanted different. We wanted to put an onboard generator on instead of a right. Honda hanging out the front of the bus. And so we had some things we wanted to change and we thought having another eight feet would be nice to have a little more room. Most people think of a service truck as a truck. Where'd you get the idea of the bus? My boy and my cousin that I farmed with, we were loading our one ton truck or whatever with a few things, air compressor and a welder one day, and I said, sure be cool to have a bus to put it inside. And one of those guys said, my boy said, well, run up town, the school's got one they want to get rid of, and the kid that was going to buy it, he's not going to use it, so I'm pretty sure 600 bucks will get you that bus, so. Good gravy, that's I made nothing. a phone call, and an hour later, we had a school bus sitting. We had to take a check to the school, and we had a school bus sitting on our yard. So after that, we were putting things in, and all of a sudden, we found out we could put a lot of stuff in that school bus, and we still had room left over. But after, I don't know, four or five years, we found out we could fill that school bus just like our shop. So <laughs> just like oh. everything else, more room is better. Yeah. So you, this goes with you when you're doing your field work, right, either the spring or the fall. Yep. Or you even use it in the summer sometimes. We use it a lot. I mean, if there's something going on, somebody needs help somewhere, we'll take the bus. and Because anything you need is usually in the bus. So when we come in the back, you positioned the air compressor reel and... We got a torch in the back left corner. And we started with just a generator and um, welder. Right. And... We had a little air compressor we put in the corner so we could always have air with us. Well, then as things proceeded, the kid we were farming with, he bought a generator, welder, air compressor, jump jump starter or whatever, the whole nine yards. Right. And that's, and, a, that's the Miller Trailblazer. Yep, then. the Miller Trailblazer. And then we decided to keep our air compressor in the corner for air capacity so we could run our one-inch impacts and stuff like that. Oh, just extra a, air Yeah, tank to do a good capacity. job with it, yep. Okay. And that, that you put on the, I'd say the right side of the bus as you're facing forward. Yep. And in the back corner then. The oxy-settling torch is on the, be the left side of the bus as yep. you're facing forward. And why in that location, just to get the cords outside? Well, when we started the deal, we <laughs> always had to run everything out the back door, our hoses and stuff. Well, then when we did the second bus, we decided to put hose, re hose reels and everything in it. So. Before we'd run our hoses straight out the back, well then if you wanted to use them inside, you had to loop them back through the door. So now we're back to having our hose reels on the inside and we can just grab them and take them outside to wherever we want to go, whatever we're working on, so. Working your way down the bus, up to the front of the bus, on the left side, past the oxy-settling tank, what's, what do you have positioned there? This bus, we got a little bit more room as we got it set up and my boy thought it'd be a good place to have a storage area where something you could work on top. So in the fall, we'll put combine parts and things like that in there. In the spring, we put tillage parts and everything in it. And if you're doing something simple, you can set it on top and work on it. And as you come forward, you know, we got oil drums and everything there. So it seems like you always got more stuff to put away somewhere. This service bus carries a remarkable array of tools, including a hydraulic hose crimper, because hydraulic hoses never seem to break sitting in a shop. In the experience you've had, you've, you've been using bus now as a service truck for how many years again? Seven, probably our eighth year right now. What did you figure out you would like to add to this bus when it came to the mechanical work you've done? Or do you pretty much feel comfortable with everything that you have right now? Well, we're pretty happy with what we got now. I mean, we started with just a small gas air compressor and, um, you know, didn't think about a welder or anything like that, a place you could put a torch. I mean, 
Now we carry our torch, we carry plasma cutters underneath the benches, two different sizes of plasma cutters, and the big air pack will run about anything you want to run, so. You know, with their second bus conversion, the Broughtons added an RV refrigerator that runs off of 120 or 12 volt electricity or LP gas, in addition to an onboard gas generator. Now, I'm kind of saving the best for last in a way, and that's now the front of the bus, and it's your kind of your open air area. That is your dining room. Yeah, you know, when we're pretty family oriented, so we all get together at noon or evening or whatever to have dinner. Sometimes it's a midnight snack or whatever the gals bring us, but we found out if you got a nice place to bring stuff or to, for them to bring stuff and plug in crock pots or cook on whatever it may be, you get to eat really well. So we um, got a table, we usually can set eight to 10 people around now in this bigger bus and we got a place to, they can bring their food and plug it in and leave again or whatever and we got this bus, we added a gas refrigerator, a camper refrigerator. I think we even broke down and put a TV in it too. So we got everything inside. We used to have to worry about when you go back to the to the yard, you had to get your equipment truck inside because everything was prone to getting wet or whatever. Well, now it doesn't matter. You just drive the bus home and park it. And but the cool thing about the bus is anybody can drive it. Automatic transmission has an Allison automatic in it. Yep. It's fairly simple to. Uh, and you don't have to put the stop sign out when you ever stop. No, this one, you can if you want, I suppose. But, <laughs> <this> <laughs> but the one thing you did, you had to change the outside for to meet state law here in Minnesota, which is you just had to change the color. Yeah, you got to make it look so the average third grader won't think it's the one he's supposed to get on, I guess, when you show up. But w Wouldn't that be a giveaway, though, when he'd get up on the, on the steps here and look down the way, thinking there's no yeah, seats? He'd, he'd know he's on the wrong bus, I think. <laughs> The second bus the Broughtons converted didn't have a bumper, so Mike took a four by 10 foot toolbar to create this storage bumper to hold pry bars and tire irons. Plus the bumper provides a home for receiver hitches that host a portable table as well as a vise. On this one, if you were to add anything or do anything over, what would it be? Are you pretty happy with what you got? You know, we're really happy with what we got. I mean, it's what can you do nowadays for 1200 bucks and have a on the road shop or whatever you know buses are the best kept secret half the time they go right to the junkyard because there's no second use for them and now something like this you can take about anything you want along and you can get in cheap and just keep adding things it's kind of like the shop you always buy something else for tools and you put a bus out there and you can just keep adding until you decide there's another bus you want to try <laughs> The cost is what the Broughtons discovered was the great attraction to converting a school bus to field service. Imagine all this for $1,200. But what made this bus conversion work was the innovative way the Broughtons used this great space. I'll see you on another Top Shop tour. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.